everybody, and welcome to It Was Tuesday with your host James Chen and the cat rubbing his face into my mouth, Nathan. Of course, we are here to talk about some new characters here in Guilty Gear Strive. Now, of course, ABBA is out already, so, you know, obviously people have already been seeing what she is capable of and what she is uh, able to do. But I, so let's actually talk about the reveal trailer that they showed at the Ark World Tour uh, first. So, uh, oh God, it's such a funny story. I'll tell it after we finish watching this, but let's watch uh, the official trailer here that was played at Ark World Tour. Heart is blazing. Need a new world order, you. <laughs> Season four development in progress. And this was all we got. And you saw the look on our faces there? Oh, that was great. I'm so glad they actually had that here. Okay, so <laughs> I have to explain the look on our faces over here. I have to explain the look on our faces over here. So while that trailer was starting up, we were sitting there and Degon, who was the stage host, was standing right behind us. And in our ear, the production was like, tell Degon to move out of the shot. Tell Degon, Degon, move out of the shot. And Degon wasn't hearing them. <laughs> and so like all three of us were like, huh? And they're like, guy, desk, tell Degon to get out of the shot because we're coming back to you right when it's done. So we, all three of us turn around and we're like, Degon, Degon, tapping him on the shoulder. We're like, you have to get out of the shot. You have to get out of the shot. He's like, okay. He gets out of the shot. We turn back. We see Bat fade away gone. So we literally, all three of us only saw like half a second. And we were like, did we just miss like the whole entire, what happened? And that's why like the three of us, after we came back, we were all like, wait, what? What was that? I didn't even see what? And like, I literally had to turn to somebody in the audience to be like, uh, who, what, what did we see? What, what did we see? And uh, sure enough, it was uh, the bat fading away over here. And for those of you who don't know, Slayer has bats, so he's a vampire, et cetera, et cetera. But that is why we look so damn confused afterwards. But it's not just that too, but you know, the very, very brief, uh, if I go back this right here, right? I mean, that's clearly Slayer's hair. He, it looks like he's got a cloak around him basically now. Like maybe his cloak actually comes up to the top of his head. But I mean, Slayer's got some hair. <laughs> that's Gordo. You know, D-Sky, you know, D-Sky. <laughs> I would, yeah, that's probably right. Uh, but I mean, the thing about it with bats and everything like that, I think it's a, I think it's a safe bet that that's Slayer. Now, the interesting thing about it is, if you actually look at YouTube and you search Strive Slayer, like. I don't think that there's actually anything that officially says that. So, uh, there is still some plausible deniability here because the video that they have uploaded on their website is called, uh, you know, it just, it just highlights season four. It's called Arc World Tour Finals 2023 Revealed Teaser. And that's all it says. There's no character name. There's nothing. And so, yeah, it might not be Slayer. But, I mean, most people are like, it's got to be Slayer. But this is going to be the last season three character. 
but them announcing that season four, and again, we didn't even see that they announced season four because we were turned around, you know, being like, Tigon, get out the shot, get out the shot, get out the shot. So by the time we turned around, we missed it even saying season four in progress, which is why we didn't even talk about it when we came back. But sure enough, season four is in progress. That was one of the things I was happy about. Great stuff for Guilty Gear. Really, really, really happy for Guilty Gear um, to be able to continue forward uh, with more stuff. Again, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next section, but Strive is in a really, really good place. Uh, so I'm really excited for uh, the Strive fan base. Uh, I'm really uh, excited to, for it to keep going. And again, as it keeps getting developed and as we keep adding, I mean, it keeps growing, like it's getting more and more complicated, right? Because now we've got all this wild assault stuff and, you know, some people thinking the wild assault stuff is a little too strong or, what, or whatever. And like I said, I'll get into a little bit more there because I have some opinions on wild assault uh, over here. But, um, Dude, it would be so funny if they threw Gordo in the game all of a sudden out of nowhere. Uh, and even if it is a floating bat, maybe it's actually Dimitri from Darkstalkers, right? Oh, God. Why did I do that to myself? Why did I do that to myself? Holy crap. God, I just pictured Dimitri in Guilty Gear Strive and, like, my heart, like, literally jumped thinking what Dimitri would be like in Guilty Gear Strive. And, like, I almost just, like, I was just, like, I almost swooned. Oh, my God, that would be so sick. But, uh, okay, not going to happen. Anyways. Uh, but can you imagine if they did make a Dark Soccer's versus Arxis game? You could have, like, Valkenhayn teamed up with John Talbane, Slayer teamed up with, you know, Dimitri. You could have, like, Potemkin teamed up with Victor. Felicia teamed up with Tal Kaka. Dude, there'd be some sick, like, teams. That'd be so cool. Anyways, all right. All right, stop doing this to myself. Let's look at ABBA over here. Uh, of course, ABBA was, re uh, was uh, shown already. Let's take a look at our trailer, because I didn't have a chance to Whatever check this out. Come, our love is eternal. Isn't it, dear? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Paracelsius is not having any of this. Lovely sea, too. My favorite color. A blue so clear, you can peer into its depths. I'm talking to Paracelsus, not you. We're busy. Go away. I won't give up Paracelsus. Not to a filthy home record. It doesn't understand. God. Oh, she's so fast. Hunt you down and trick you, curse you, crush you. God, I love that. That's God, it's like my favorite part of that whole trailer. And shout out to Arxis for continually making new stages. Uh hint to other fighting game companies. But this is literally like my favorite part of this whole trailer is this part right here. God, the look look at poor Paracelsus, dude. Like she's just scratching into her face and she's just gone completely insane, dude. Like and look at Sin. Sin's like, what the fuck is actually happening? What is happening here, dude? Oh my gosh. It's so good, dude. I love it. I love it. But obviously, uh, ABBA is out. Uh, they have her, you know, uh, placed, you know, her, her, her basic strategy guide there. She's an interesting character. She, the whole goal of her basically is to build up the, I'm going to call it the gloomy meter because of uh, Tira from Soul Calibur. But basically, she's just trying to build up that meter so that she can transform and have as much of that as possible. Now, when she's transformed, Paracelsus is all 
in black and covered in goo. When it's yellow, she's in her original, I don't want to call it a happy form because it's less gloomy form, you know? Um, <clears throat> but basically, uh, it's going to be an interesting balance because when she's in the regular form, her movement is really slow. She, you know, she's got this very slow walk dash. She's got a command dash that she can block out of and stuff like that. So that's nice and stuff. But her whole goal is to build up that meter. She's got several ways to build up the meter. When she's in the normal state, she's got a parry move that increases it by a lot. She's got the move where she sticks the key in you and pulls it out. And that builds a lot and will transform you uh, if there's enough meter there by default. And so from a lot of the early word that I had heard from Arc World Tour was that, you know, it, it might be just like hard for her to actually build up enough meter and, and she might just die, you know, before she even has a chance. Like I was saying, like, how is she going to fight Nagori Yuki, who's going to just zone her out with standing heavies all day and stuff. But now that she's out, Dude, she looks terrifying. Her damage is ridiculous. <laughs> Some of the clips that I've been seeing put out there on Twitter, her damage is ridiculous. She's just doing like 80% combos and stuff. And not only that, but she can jump between the modes on command. And when you manually exit out of it, it's kind of like the eddy meter. Like when you exit out of it, it looks like you gain a giant chunk back, right? And so what I noticed a lot of people are actually doing, they're finding ways to, you know, because of the wall splat mechanic, to almost just kind of be in gloomy mode the entire time once she gets in there. Because she gets it, it drains hella slow. She's so fast and she's got crazy high-low mix-ups and she hits you and I've seen combos that are like bam, 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 bam into the wall canceled into untransform, gains a whole chunk back, go into the key, boom, gain a giant chunk out of that and transform back into fast mode. You knock them through the glass and now you've got all this extra meter to be fast again and just kind of rinse and repeat. So uh, it seems like she's, uh, I she might be really scary at the start. Now, of course, you know, this is typical fighting game character syndrome when they just drop and everybody is finding all the optimal and scary stuff. It's like, oh, this character looks broken. And then the character comes out and you're like, oh, they're not that good. You know, um, it's really interesting to see how she's going to play out. Is she going to be a, a kind of a mistake like Exer Johnny was? Like, I've always felt like Exer Johnny was a mistake because the whole point of him was... Always, you have to spend one combo doing no damage to get a coin. And then the next combo, you get to do all your damage. And then rinse and repeat. And you try to cash out your damage as much as possible when you do hit them in a coin situation. The problem was in Exert is that it was too easy to recoin. So in other words, if you coin someone, then the next time you, you could coin people in the middle of combos. You can coin people at the start and then after that hit them and end the combo with a coin. So you were just always in that powered up situation. So Johnny was too much. Like they gave him too much off of that situation. The goal was that if you wanted to recoin someone in a combo, it should have cost you a lot more, way more resources to do uh, if you even if you wanted to do that. Um, and unfortunately, uh, they messed up and Johnny was clearly too strong uh, in Exer. And I think that's kind of what it was. And so I'm hoping that doesn't happen with ABBA where it's literally, hi, I transform, I'm fast. And now you just never can stop me from being this way. You know, the thing about old ABBA that was really risky for her was she had these blood packs. She had these blood packs and you had to, one of the ways to transform into the powered mode was that you would actually throw a blood pack on the ground and she would just become more powerful. Uh, Paracelsus didn't just get all gooey, it turned into Skeletor staff, literally like this evil ram head. But the problem is, if you didn't transform back with a blood pack or with the key move, if you didn't transform back, she actually would go into a uh, animation 
and then have to fight. And during that, it was like she was dizzy. And if you knocked her down when her blood pack ran out, she would get up and automatically go into that. So a lot of the times, one of Abba's weaknesses was she would go into powered up mode. You'd hit her, knock her down. The blood pack would empty. You'd activate your instant kill, your IK. She'd get up and then you just got a free instant kill on Abba. Uh, it was, uh, <laughs> it was kind of a problem for her. Uh, oh, was it, you had to knock her down three times? You had to get rid of all the blood packs, was it? I can't remember exactly how it worked, but yeah, she was, uh, she definitely had a big weakness, but when she was powered up, she was frightening. Uh, in this game, it, there's really doesn't seem to be a downside to just letting that meter run out and getting out of that mode, except that you just have to build the meter up again. And it seems like it seems pretty easy that you can maintain her in that state this uh, for long periods of time. So I'm curious to see how she's going to be. Uh, the Guilty Gear Strive DLC characters outside of uh, like happy chaos, especially in season two, have all been starting out kind of weak, right? So Testament came out kind of weak, Biken came out weak, Bedman came out weak, uh, Bridget came out decent, uh, but yeah, Elfelt is a little mid right now, most people say. Uh, there hasn't really been a strong DLC character in Guilty Gear Strive in quite some time. And I'm wondering if ABBA might be the first one to break that, that, that trend. Uh, some people were saying that one of the things that they were observing about her was that, you know, she's a homunculus, that she might be made out of copper, so her hair was red and now it's green because, like, the Statue of Liberty went from being reddish gold into turning green due to age and rust and stuff like that. Uh, the producers themselves said that's not true, but that theory is super, super fascinating. Um... Uh, yeah, uh, Biken is super good now. Testament is definitely uh, very strong. Uh, so a lot of them did get buffed into points where they are very, very good. Sin came out awful, but now Sin might be like top three in the game. Uh, so I imagine Elfelt will get stronger as time goes. Uh, Bedman is the only one that for some reason, Bedman just hasn't gotten enough love yet. And Bedman is still not a very, very strong character. Uh, but yeah, the producer said that that's not the case with ABBA, but from initial reports right now, ABBA looks really strong, and I'm cool, curious to see how she's going to run. Oh yeah, of course, Asuka came out, and Asuka, I mean, he's obviously good, very strong, but my god, he's hard to use. So he's one of those characters. I mean, you have to have that APM and instant processing when you're cycling through your cards to be able to get to the ones that you need, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so yeah, um, uh, I think Abba, I don't know. She seems really interesting to me. Very, very cool. I keep, I mean, I made a tweet about this saying take a chance on her. And, uh, I, you know, I said I might take a chance on her. And everybody was like, oh, yeah, I think I will too. But, you know, people aren't old enough to know all the ABBA references that I put into that tweet. So, ABBA, obviously named after the band ABBA because that's what Daisuke does. And one of ABBA's songs is Take a Chance on Me. Take a chance on me, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's the older people got it immediately, of course. But that Slayer and ABBA, uh, if you guys don't know what Slayer is all about, Slayer is all about just damage output. I mean, he is just kind of known for erasing your health so fast, but he has very short-range buttons, uh, but he's got like pile bunker, which is rush punch, which just hurts like hell. He's got a teleport dash like Sienko does. Uh, but you know, uh, his standing kick just reaches ridiculously far. But yeah, it's really just about pile bunkers, map of punches and, uh, you know, high, low mix ups, left, right mix ups. But he is more of a close range brawler, you know, in XX at least. 
you know, he was a character that lost the Potemkin because he wants to be in your face. And it's not a good place to be in for. Yeah, Slayer is one of the people that has the The reason why, I don't know if you've ever heard, but whenever I commentated uh, Colleen in Street Fighter V, when she did her vanity step where she would go backwards and slide forward again, there were sometimes on commentary I would intentionally call it the dandy step because that's what Slayer has. You know, he goes back and comes forward. He goes back and comes in for an overhead. He goes back and comes in for a low. He comes back, goes back and comes in for a pile bunker that if you touch a button, he pile bunkers you. You can kiss a ton of your life goodbye and stuff. He had a command grab, et cetera, et cetera. But he's really known for just when he hits you, you melt. Like he has just been one of those characters that he's always just been a high damage character like that's what people know Slayer for like if you jumped at him in XX and he did forward heavy kick uh, forward heavy slash which is this big arching overhead kick and if he counter hit you out of the air like you're just like if you don't have a burst you're just like you just like do the thing where you just pull out the trumpet <laughs> You know, like, you were just dead. Like, that was just it. You died. Uh, but he's also known as a lover of haikus. And he's also got his girl, Sharon, who he sucks the blood from. And, and then she basically deflates like a balloon and flies around the screen. Uh, that was an excerpt, which was so weird, but it was funny. Uh, but he is also considered to be, like, basically unkillable. Slayer, in my knowledge, is the first fighting game character that had the knockdown pose of him lying down on his arm like hmm interesting so basically every time you knocked him down he would just be like lying down on the floor you know like huh you know so even after you ko ko'd him he'd be lying there like huh like he would never actually lose so uh he's supposed to be extremely strong uh vampire uh but you know um if it is actually slayer <laughs> Like I said, it could be Gordo, it could be Dimitri, we'll find out. Uh, <clears throat> no, Jackie Chan would fall down, but then he'd get up and go, yeah! Like, Slayer doesn't even have a back on his back pose. Like, every time you knock him down, he would just be in that pose. So, Jackie Chan would actually hit the ground and get up and be like, good job! So, that's, that's different, that's different. But there you go. Uh, Slayer, if it is Slayer... Uh, ABBA out now, so definitely pick her up. Uh, if you just really like ABBA and you don't have Guilty Gear, they have a discounted bundle for ABBA and Guilty Gear, which is a neat, neat thing that uh, Arxis did. So you can just get the new character and the game. Uh, they have a discount bundle, which is cool. So, But uh, that's available right now. Uh, ABBA's available right now. Slayer coming out soon, and now it confirms Season 4. Who would you guys like to see in season four? Uh, chat, comments in the YouTube. Let me know who you'd like to see coming out in a season four. I know a lot of people are asking for Jam right now. Uh, Robo Kai is another one. Yeah, new character would actually be cool. I would like to see a character come back that has never been playable before. A Daryl would be cool. Uh, or even a Dr. Paradigm would be kind of sick. Uh, I think the, like those would probably be kind of neat. Venom or Dizzy. You don't want Jam to be in Strive because that means I'll have to play the game again. Oh, you're a Jam player. Okay, fair enough. Uh, but yeah, uh, again, keep in mind too that if they ever bring your character back, large, a high chance that they won't play like they did before. Like Robokai, you know, is just going to be a a completely different character. I know that's kind of hurt me getting back in because Johnny, uh, I haven't been able to get accustomed to Johnny. Uh, I might just go back to Potemkin at some point, so. Oh, Gabriel. I mean, Gabriel is just supposed to be like OP, right? So it wouldn't really kind of make sense to put him in the game because supposedly, isn't he just supposed to kill everybody or something? <laughs> but I don't know, I don't know. But there you go. Thank you guys for watching this, and uh, for those of you on Twitch, we'll be talking a little bit about that Daisuke article, that Dexerto article about destroying Exert, and, uh, you know, talking about, you know, kind of the social media reactions to it. 
Uh, and then we'll also talk talking about a little bit about a fighting game tier list. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for watching here. And uh, for those of you on YouTube, the day that this podcast graced your ears was the most important day of your life. But for me... It was Tuesday. <laughs>